Hi everyone, this is Ranjit and welcome to the next video in the Geom Algolib series. So the next set of algorithms that I want to do are related to meshes. So before I actually get started with these algorithms, I added uh, some code to our project, so just some boilerplate mesh related code so that we can directly jump into the algorithms and not spend time writing this code. So instead of uh, giving you a detailed coverage of this code, I'll just do a very quick review. And if you're interested in the implementation details, you can always find the source code on GitHub and go through it yourself. So one of the first things I added is an R tree class. It's actually a class template because we will be needing an R tree both in three and two dimensions. So these two R trees would have a lot of code in common. So it makes sense to use a template. Yeah, this is a pretty basic R tree class. It doesn't have any logic, any actual real logic in itself. It just wraps a boost R tree in the boost geometry namespace and calls internally calls uh, the boost R tree functions. So it essentially serves as an adapter between the boost R tree and what we need for our mesh algorithms. And after that, I added a class to store our mesh and some other structures related to meshes. We have the struct here called mesh face and it stores the indices of the vertices that define that face and some other functions, just very basic implementations to get the edge of that face to check if that face contains a given vertex, flip the face and so on. You can you can go through the source code of these in the GitHub repo and they're all quite obvious. And we have another structure here to store the edges that belong to a face, the indices of these edges. And it's similar to the, the other one, but they still have to be different structures because they have different concepts and names. And then comes the mesh class itself. It's also pretty basic boilerplate code. We have these private members to store the vertices and the faces. And of course, our meshes only have triangular faces. We don't support quad faces or anything because that's not really important to learn the algorithms that we're going to use these meshes for. And then we have a whole lot of unordered maps which store topology related information. So what vertex is connected to what faces, what edges, all that, all that stuff is stored in these unordered maps. And we have uh, data structures to store the normals of the vertices and faces. And here we use the R trees that we looked at before. Uh, this R tree stores all the faces of the mesh and this R tree stores all the vertices of the mesh. And we don't really need to look at the private uh, functions. If you're interested, you can, again, uh, look at the implementations in the source code. So if we look at the public functions, we have a few different constructors, uh, a copy constructor, a constructor that takes the vertices and faces, uh, another constructor that takes the same information but formatted slightly differently, and a constructor template which takes iterators for the same information, basically the vertices and faces, but using iterators. And we have uh, some basic functions that allow us to access information related to vertices and faces, accessing the normals, and then iterators to actually access all the vertices and faces, and some basic convenience functions to access the bounding box of the mesh, the bounding box of a an individual face, the area of an individual face, and the area of an entire mesh. And we also have some basic p invoke functions that allow us to interact with the with our mesh instance from managed C sharp code. I also added some code on the C sharp side to test this boilerplate mesh code. Uh, these are obviously the declarations for our p invoke functions on on the C sharp side. And if we go into the references of these, we have a new class for mesh utilities. And in this class, we have three methods, a method to, uh, that accepts a pointer to an unmanaged mesh. Well, this is actually an extension method. So you can be like mesh pointer dot to Rhino mesh. So this converts this unmanaged mesh 
into a Rhino mesh by accessing all the data and creating a new Rhino mesh with the same vertices and faces. And this method converts a Rhino mesh into an unmanaged mesh and returns the pointer to this unmanaged mesh and creates the unmanaged mesh by calling one of the pinvoke functions. One extra step that it does is because Rhino supports meshes with both triangle and quad faces, we have to first convert all the faces, all the quad faces into triangles. And then we have another function that clones a Rhino mesh. This function is designed to test the basic data structures of our mesh class. It converts the Rhino mesh into an unmanaged mesh and it then converts that unmanaged mesh back into a new instance of the Rhino mesh and deletes the unmanaged mesh. So we can test this by building our project and starting a debug session. So now that we have an instance of Rhino running, I'll create a mesh container and a C sharp script component that will call our code. So this will take a Rhino mesh and return a clone mesh, which will be cloned via our C++ code. So let's just set the data types to mesh. Oh, one more thing. We have to actually add the assembly. We actually have it in the recently added recent assemblies list, so we can just drag it from there. Yeah, let's just go ahead and type clone mesh equals Rhino interface dot mesh util dot clone mesh and pass the input mesh to that function and that should be everything we need to do. Well we get a null reference exception because we didn't actually pass any mesh to this script component. So maybe it's a good idea to do this check before. If mesh is null return so that we don't get this exception all the time. So let's create a mesh. Uh, go over to the Rhino side. I think it's called Mesh Sphere. So just doesn't matter. Let's internalize that mesh in this container so that it's not in the Rhino document, but rather in the Grasshopper definition. So now that we have this mesh here, we can just plug this in. Let's turn off the preview for our for our input mesh. And as you can see, we get back a triangulated copy of that same mesh. So we can even put a breakpoint in, in our clone mesh function and run this again. So first we convert the Rhino mesh into an unmanaged mesh. That mesh is right now at this memory location and we convert that mesh back into a new instance of the Rhino mesh and we delete the unmanaged mesh and we return the clone. So yeah, that proves that our data structures work. And now we're ready to jump into the algorithms related to the mesh. So I'll see you in the next video where we will get started with an algorithm to compute the volume of meshes. Bye.